So you've been using Resolve for a little bit. You're kind of getting into color grading and you're like, man, uh, maybe I should uh, look into one of those color surfaces, huh? Maybe you maybe I get, uh, get a little bit more professional. Well, here's a little bit more information on color surfaces and my recommendations on should you get one? Ooh, look how schmancy it is. There are several different color panels available. I'm just gonna talk about the ones from Blackmagic Design and they essentially have three panels. They have the micro panel, the mini panel, and the big old donkey DaVinci Resolve Advanced panel. This one is $30,000, so I would definitely only recommend this if you're doing super professional work and you're getting paid $30,000 to do color on a regular basis. It's very cool, it gives you a lot of control, but we're gonna just go ahead and talk about the smaller panels, the mini panel, and the micro panel, since I think that's what might actually be in the range of possibility for most of us. So what are the main advantages of a color panel? Why don't we just take a look? I am fortunate enough to have one of the mini panels and it gives you quite a bit of control over the color page in Resolve. Here we have a fancy layout where you can see my hands and see what's happening on screen. Long story short, a service lets you adjust things in the color page without using the mouse. So if I wanna do something like boost up the exposure here, I can just go to offset mode and I can roll with this ring and it's just like adjusting this master wheel under my offset. I can quickly kind of dial this in without having to look at my mouse and actually look at this interface right here. I can focus on the image on the screen. So I just look at my image and I can kind of feel my way around the surface and adjust the controls. And the more I get used to it, the more I can just quickly do something. If I want to adjust the saturation, I know that's this knob right here and I can turn that up or down. I can reset it by pushing it down and it just saves a lot of time. And something that's great is I can adjust multiple things at once using both hands. So I can bring my lift down while bringing my gain up. I can move them together to adjust my footage to be exactly the way I want and it becomes a little bit more intuitive than clicking around and doing one thing at a time with the mouse. So I have my three wheels here. Those correspond to lift, gamma, and gain. If I want to adjust offset, I can click on this little button right here in the middle. And that switches this to offset mode, and then this wheel and ball become my offset controls, and then this wheel and this wheel become my temperature and tint. So as I move these, it moves my temperature and tint. I can reset things by clicking these upper buttons, I can go back to where I was pretty quickly. All the primary controls right here, contrast, pivot, midtone detail, hue, saturation, those things, those are right here on kind of the upper part of the surface. So again, when I get used to it, I can boost the contrast. I can change the pivot. I can even do that both at the same time and kind of dial this in to the way I want just by looking at the image and kind of feeling around with my hands. That's the advantage to having these tactile controls is you can kind of feel your way around, whereas something like an iPad app or a touch screen, you just don't get that tactile control and so you can't really feel where you are, you have to look at it. And it's all about not having to look at where your hands are and just concentrating on the image. Over here on this side of the surface, we have things like I can grab a still, I can undo and redo things, I can disable and bypass. I can set various playback options. I can jump in between clips, even step in between frames. Just turn off my overlay here. And if I have a lot of nodes, I can step in between my nodes like this with these buttons right here. On the upper part of this panel, I have quite a bit more control. Let's just zoom into this part so we can see a little better. Up here, we have a lot of control over stuff. These buttons right here, let me change out my palettes. And I have pretty much all the control that I would with a mouse, but again, it's all kind of tactile, right? So I can remember that if I want to add a window, I can just click window and turn on my circle window. I can even move the circle window around, kind of like an Etch-a-Sketch with these, these little controls, which is really nice. And I can change the size and the aspect and the softness and everything of this window. I can invert this window and add a quick vignette. And it's more of a matter of kind of building this muscle memory rather than clicking around in the interface with the mouse. I can switch to my next node, go to curves, and I can quickly do something like add an S curve just with these two controls like this. So when you get used to working with this, you can move really quickly. Let's say I want to desaturate kind of all the greens. I can go to hue versus saturation, take down this kind of yellow and green a little bit. And again, when you get used to it, it's just like boom, boom, boom. 
instead of having to click through things in the interface and find your curves and then switch over to hue versus hue and click on the green and then move it down. It's really quick. We just hit this and push them down like that. And you have all these different controls on these screens, which are all adjusted with these knobs. And you can switch out to more controls using these soft buttons up here, which change and get updated when resolve is updated. Then we have these buttons to the right, which let you quickly add nodes, serial parallel layer, there's even a couple of shortcut buttons. If we want to add a new node and a circle window, it kind of does that all at once. And we can adjust that so we can quickly select parts of the shot, bring them down, whatever we want to do. We have copy paste. We can look at a full screen viewer, turn on our highlight, move between stills and keyframes. There's a ton of control just in this part of the panel. So that's how the mini panel is laid out. We have the main kind of primary controls right here all the time. And then we have all the other palettes up here. We have a lot of node controls here. We can move in between nodes and clips and frames right here. We have playback. We have kind of JKL type of control down here. And it's just a really nice layout. So this panel is about $2,000. It also comes with Resolve Studio, which is really cool. So if you don't have Resolve Studio, that's a nice little bonus. Let's take a look at the micro panel. Boom. This is the micro panel and it's pretty much like the lower part of the mini panel. And it has all the primary controls, you can grab stills, undo, redo, bypass, disable, all of those kind of things. Go in between nodes and frames and clips. You have your playback controls, but you don't have any of the upper stuff. So this is really nice for having some tactile control, but there's a lot of stuff you can't do with it. If I want to adjust the curves or add a window or add a node even, you can't do that with this surface, which is kind of a deal breaker for me. If I'm going to get a surface, I want to be able to do all the normal things that I would want to do in the color page. And this can only let me do some of them. This is about $900. So it's definitely more budget friendly. But as far as choosing between this one and the mini panel, the mini panel is about twice the price and it's probably eight times as good. So if you're looking for a color surface, I would definitely recommend the mini panel. That thing is awesome. It can really speed up your workflow. And if you're kind of on the fence of whether you should get one or not, I think a good rule of thumb is, are you doing a lot of color? Are you making money doing color grading? If you're color grading two or three projects a week, either for yourself or for clients, it's probably a good idea to get something like the mini panel. If you just kind of color grade something every few months and you're just working on personal projects and you know, you're not making money or doing paid work that would include color grading, uh, I might hold off on that because you can color grade amazing things in Resolve without a surface. It's not a deal breaker, but it does speed up your workflow. So if you're doing it often, I would definitely recommend. Hey, if you want to learn more about color grading, we have a course for that. Make sure to check that out. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoy yourself today. And hey, if you made it this far in the video, what is the number one thing that you do in Resolve? Well, why don't you let me know and maybe we could talk about whether that exists on a color panel or not. Hmm?